Hey, we're Ben and MP, and we're pretty much rebuilding a pirate ship. In this episode, we were just about to place our water tanks under our flooring until we came up with a creative idea to fit more ballast underneath those tanks. On top of that, we finally got some sun, which meant we could head outside and do a lot of jobs that we were meaning to do for a very long time. It was all going fine, until when I was unrolling a sail, MP shouted, Hey, look, look, look. Hey, look. So Don't forget to subscribe to follow our journey, and most of all, enjoy. So we have 250 liters here, another 250 there, which gives us 500 liters only on this side of the bowl. Of course, it's still going to repeat the same on that side too. We're going to have 1,000 liters of water. And when the tanks are full, we're going to have a ton of water that can also work as ballast. We now have quite a lot of weight forwards of where the water tanks are going to be, which means from about yeah, from the middle of the boat to the bow, or at least the bow locker. We're saving the bow locker for last to add weight in the water if we need to, to balance out the water line. However, behind the center line of the boat, around between the two masts, is gonna be about three, three and a half meters of water tanks, which we don't wanna consider ballast because they might be empty, and we wanna consider the five, five and a half tons for now without the water tank. Now, that leaves a lot of space under well, where the water tanks have to be and after the water tanks without ballast excluding the engine the rudder the diesel tanks uh, so we're going to try and put some hexagonal stones which came actually from the road the pavement got taken up a while ago and that is now here at the shipyard all those stones we're thinking of putting them under the water tanks however to do that we need to create a little flooring or some little wooden battens fasten them to the frames so we can lay some of those hexagonal bricks under the water tank so that's going to be the next step I'm going to try and get about two and a 2.4 meters one and just lay them down and see what it looks like but first I've got to go and find which one to use This ballast phase is taking so long because we just want to make sure it's right. So it's lots of cleaning, putting stones in, moving stones, seeing how strong we can put them in place, that they don't move, that they don't fall through the frames and so on. So right now we've used some of these kind of little battens that we've just been putting in for now so we can lay those hexagonal bricks in. And that got me thinking, these big stones, these ones, those ones um, they're kind of resting on the tip the tip of the stone is resting on a frame and in the middle there's nothing so I'm afraid they might with throughout time without any stress or with stress 
that there might just crack in the middle and that is not bad for the stones or for the hole itself but all the dirt is just going to end up in all the bilge pumps and then it will start moving around so I've cut a few little battens that will fit from frame to frame and we're going to do stone per stone so we can lay those little battens next to each other in between each other so each of these big stones is also supported in between the frames so that's what I've cut now and I'm going to paint them all with an epoxy primer so that we can lay them under the stones and that they don't they're just an extra layer of protection however on top of that speaking of epoxy Nico spent the last two days sanding down the inside of the bowl work bollock bollock I'll get that right one day uh, and I realized today by standing on it and my foot sticking he's actually painting it so we're gonna go over where I stepped on unfortunately but he's actually already going over the ins inside with the epoxy primer as well which is going to go under the PU paint uh, because it's been getting lots of sun and rain and with this primer on it's already just going to really protect the wood so have a look at this Until very recently, all this part of the wood, our gunnel, was just painted with a primer. Now we are finally applying some epoxy to have it even more protected and waterproof. And then later we can add the final color. The person who's involved the most with this activity is Nico, just behind me. And he's being amazing, he's super proactive, he's taking so much initiative. Actually, this was his idea to start doing this to protect the wood as soon as possible. We are super thankful for his help and I'm very excited about how this is looking because before it was that grey color from the primer which is not... I do love grey but on this wooden boat it wasn't the best color so now that's changing to white so then the final color it will look amazing and I'm very keen to see that. We have now actually cut a bunch of battens and then lifted up each and every one of these at least 70 kilo stones which are the rectangular, well not rectangular, not the flat long ones but the shorter taller ones and we have now added all those battens underneath the stones to make sure that if there is a weak spot in the middle it won't crack and fall through. So that was a big faff to move them around as there was only about two centimeters on top of the stone to work with and the batten was one and a half centimeters. That's all done now, so we're going to start moving all the hexagonal stones in, which is quite pleasant as they are around 20 to 30 kilos and they're going to sit on top of these and then the water tanks are going to rest on top of that. It's just so we can use the space under the water tanks for some ballast as well. And what's really nice is the further more aft we're working, the more open the space is and the closer it is to the bringing the stones down, which is super nice. So we're very happy that this whole forward part is done where the most bulkheads are and we're going to start 
move them more aft, which is going to be the easier part. It's funny because I say that now, but it's probably going to be so much harder than I imagine. I'm just going to correct myself here quickly before I seem like a fool. They were nine, around nine kilos, and that's exactly why we're weighing them, so we know how much each one of them is, to have a better and more accurate idea of how much ballast is in the boat and how much we have to work with in the water. Oh, the sink. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say that most of our ballast is in place. We've got all the tubes along the keelson. We've got these little hexagonal stones which go under the most forward water tank. And we've got a bunch of other stones here more towards the bow. Uh, the next steps are to put the water tanks in. However, before putting the water tanks in, we'd rather make all the holes and the, uh, well, any, anything that we need to be holes or hoses in the, water tanks we want to be doing it up there and not while it's installed so that's going to be the next step later we'll continue with ballast however what we're going to do now lots of these stones are quite loose this one not included that one's for later so we're going to get make lots of little blocks wooden blocks paint them with the epoxy primer just to make sure they stay nice and in one piece and we're going to fasten them onto the frames in places where stones can still move so i've made 16 i think for now and we've got the same nails that we're using for the hole which are very very thick nails and we're going to start just fastening all this ballast in place when all the tanks are installed and the rest of the ballast we can see the total weight and start adding more in little cr crooks and crannies if necessary leaving the engine room and the bow locker without ballast so when we're in the water and we need to add some we can level out the water line a bit uh, same with the extremi lateral extremities, but for now that's going to happen. Also Nico is doing an amazing job on the deck, painting, primer painting, everything that needs to be painted, filling up the seams with a compound, and now he's going over with a second layer of epoxy primer paint before we then go over to the polyurethane paint, which will be the final colour.
one thing on our list that we want to do during this beautiful sunny day, blue skies and a lot of wind, is to start finishing the platform on the stern of the boat. There are lots of plate which has been primer painted with a grey primer, then it's been painted with an epoxy primer paint. However, that was just done so that we could protect the wood. Now what we want to do is kind of leave it completely ready to receive its final layer just like the inside of the bulwark in the well by the by the deck. So what the plan is now is I'm going to go over with uh, I've just gone over actually with the compressor gun cleaning all the little seams and gaps where dirt can get in and water can get trapped. Uh, then I have gone over with some a compressor gun with ethanol so it gets in all the crooks and crannies that will then help dry out all the oily bits and also whatever's humid and now I've actually got a heat gun that I'm going in all the joints with as well and then when that's done we're gonna start applying the same caulking compound that's on the hull in all these little uh, water traps so that soon we can when we put on the next layers of primer epoxy paint we can then really make sure no water gets trapped because based on our, what we saw on our previous platform is that lots and lots of water gets trapped in here. Now that we can't go any further with the ballast until we've got these water tanks installed and the holes and the fittings in the water tanks made, we're going to move outside because what we do often is when we can't work outside due to weather, we work inside and when we can't work inside, we work outside. So now the weather is really, really nice here, it's dry, humidity's dropped, so what we tend to do is stuff like varnish, epoxy, fiberglass, any painting working with sails, rigging and so on. So that's what's going to happen now.
three sails now, now to four. Third time's a charm, as you can see with all those ants. It's really funny because every time we were putting corking compound or just any filling compound into the seams, you could see ants coming out. We always wondered why. And now we know. One more sail, but that's gonna be for tomorrow. I don't know if this is a worldwide belief, but at least here in Brazil, we say that when you have ants in your home, there are changes coming your way. Of course, when I saw all those fire ants, all I could think of was that whoever called them fire ants did a great job at describing them. Because, oh man, did that sting! But later on, I started reflecting over the hidden meaning of the nest and wondering what those changes could be. To be honest, I really don't know. But I know that these last two years really prepared us for facing challenges, so I think we're ready to whatever comes next. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon crew, Jane, Brian, Nancy and Robert, David, Elliot, Ivan and Seth. And for donating through PayPal, thank you so much Michael and Jonathan. And the super thanks from Joseph and Herbin. Thank you so much guys and see you next Sunday.